Hello viewers, I'm Bertie, the CEO of Pay the Tax and Bookkeeping Business in the GTA region of Ontario. In this video, I'm going to explain the calculation of basic Canada Workers' Benefit, also called CWB, that is calculated in Schedule 6 of your Personal Income Tax and Benefit Return 2020. The Canada Workers' Benefit or CWB is a refundable tax credit that is intended to supplement the earnings of low-income workers. As of the 2019 tax year, you may choose to include or not include tax-exempt income when you calculate the CWB. You cannot claim the CWB for 2020 if any of the following apply to you. One, you were enrolled as a full-time student at a designated educational institution for a total of more than 13 weeks in the year, unless you had an eligible dependent at the end of the year. 2. You were confined to a prison or similar institution for a period of at least 90 days during the year. 3. You were exempt from income tax in Canada for a period in the year when you were an officer or servant of another country, such as a diplomat, and you resided in Canada, or you were a family member who resided with such a person or an employee of such a person at any time in the year. First, we'll look at the concept of adjusted family net income levels. If you are neither an eligible spouse nor an eligible dependent and you want to claim basic CWB, then your adjusted family net income must be less than $24,569. However, if you are an eligible spouse or an eligible dependent and you want to claim basic CWB, then your adjusted family net income must be less than $37,176. Now we'll look at the calculation of basic CWB for an individual without a spouse or an eligible dependent. Suppose the working income amount on line 16 is $17,500. Now we're going to deduct the base amount that is $3,000. Net working income would be $14,500. The CWB rate is 26%. So when we multiply 26% with 14,500, we get a value of $3,770. Now, if you had neither an eligible spouse nor an eligible dependent, then we need to enter the amount of $1,381 in line 21 that is shown on the screen now you need to write the amount from line 20 or line 21 whichever is less on line 22 so in this case definitely 1381 is the lower amount so we have entered this amount instead of 3770 adjusted family net income is assumed to be the same as working income that is $17,500 and again, there is a requirement if you had neither an eligible spouse nor an eligible dependent, that, that would be applicable in our case because we're dealing with the case of an individual, then you need to enter the amount of $13,064 that we have entered in line 24. Now we need to get an adjustment line 23 minus line 24. And again, if negative, enter zero. So in this case, we get a value of $4,436 that is basically the difference between $17,500 and $13,064. Now the rate is 12% in line 26. We'll multiply 12% with $4,436 and we arrive at a value of $532.32 that is written on line 27. So we're going to deduct 13 well, 1381 from 532.32 that is line 22 minus line 27 so in this case we get a value of 848 dollars 68 cents so this value of 848 dollars 68 cents we in the cents we need to enter um, on line 45,300 of your personal income tax return so what would be the effect of CWB on taxable income in our example? 
So in this case, we know that this amount of $848.68 of CWB, and this will be deducted from the total tax payable by the individual. Suppose the total tax payable before CWB adjustment was $900. So now after CWB adjustment, the tax payable will be $900 minus $848.68. That is $51.32. So it means because of CW B adjustment that tax liability has been reduced by $848.68 and it has arrived or come to $51.32 because this individual falls within the category of low income group. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for future updates. Thank you for watching.